the most successful creators, entrepreneurs, and leaders are also magnetic speakers. But hey, how did they get so good at it? For my book, Public Speaking with Confidence, I interviewed 34 professional speakers to find out how they got so freaking good. And I found that there were a few methods that they use that could turn really any average person into an incredible speaker. In this video, you'll uncover the five steps to become a better speaker than 99% of the people. Step one, give less when I started on my speaking journey, I did what most people do. I took a bunch of public speaking courses. You know, the ones where they teach you how to reduce the filler words, how to place your hands beautifully, and how to pronounce things very eloquently. <laughs> but here's the thing, even though I followed all of their advice, I somehow still didn't get much better. Now, why was that? Well, stuff like filler words, pausing, body language, that's great if you are already a solid speaker. But if you're just starting out, that's completely useless. So what should you focus on instead? Simple, stop giving so many f**ks. Now, we as humans, we care way too much what other people think of us. We're constantly worried like, uh, what if people think I'm not smart enough? What if I black out? What if, uh, what if I lose? <laughs> We care way too much what other people think of us. Now, by being lost in our thoughts, we cannot be there present, we cannot be there confident, we cannot be there and really deliver a presentation that inspires others. So, how can you fix that? It's by doing a practice called constructive embarrassment. Constructive embarrassment is a practice where you put yourself on purpose in an embarrassing situation. That can be anything that makes you cringe. Let me give you a few examples, okay? Uh, I did a challenge recently. And for example, one of the first challenges was uh, high five strangers. So I went into the streets and just any random stranger that came by, I was like, high five, high five, high five. So that was one to get started. After that, I went in front of the McDonald's and I just pretended to be a greeter in front of McDonald's. So I was like, hey, what's up? Welcome to McDonald's. I started trying to shake uh, people's hand. Obviously, <laughs> almost never worked. Um, and another one is I went to a pharmacy. Uh, there was a line behind me. And then I was like, uh, excuse me. Um, I want to buy extra small condoms. Do you have them? <laughs> Pretty sure that I get now some angry comments by someone feeling offended. Apologies in advance. Um, and then maybe just to give you one more for inspiration, another one is I went to a coffee shop around the corner, found myself a cozy spot on the ground, cleared it up a little bit, and then just started lying down. Now, I know, now I'm telling this stuff very casually, and you're thinking, ah, Philip, you don't have any shame. That stuff is still hard for me. Like, I find it incredibly challenging. But it is so rewarding. If your reaction is right now, Philip, you're an absolute idiot. I would never do something like this. This is unacceptable. Well, I would say then it probably means that you have so much to gain from that. Constructive embarrassment is the single most effective tool I know to become a better speaker. But hey, what are the ways how you could practice constructive embarrassment? There are two options. First option is you do one challenge every day. For example, you pick the next 14 to 30 days in which you do one tiny challenge every single day. And I know now you're pushing back, ah, oh, Philip, 30 days, I don't have time to do that. It takes you two minutes to do an exercise. Two minutes every day for 30 days, that's 60 minutes in total. 60 minutes for something that will completely transform your speaking skills quite a fair deal, right? But actually, let me help you out on this one. I'll include a template to my last 30-day challenge so that you can get some inspiration there. Now, that's the first option. The second option is to do one challenge before a big moment. About two years ago, I was invited to give a TED talk in the south of Netherlands in Remont. And there I had to take a train from Amsterdam to Remont. And on that day, I thought, you know what? Let me get ready. So I was in the train, lots of people around me. And I stood up and asked, uh, excuse me, could I have your attention, please? Um, I want to sing a song for you. Now, 
You should know. I'm a terrible singer. I don't know how to sing well, but still, I start singing this random reggaeton song. <laughs> As I sing, I see people looking away. They're thinking like, what is this? Please stop this torture. But I go on. A few hours later, I walk onto the stage, onto the red circle to give my speech in front of hundreds of people. And to my surprise, I feel pretty calm. And why is that? Because in my mind, I thought, hey, <laughs> you just sang in a freaking train. Pretty sure you can handle right now speaking in front of a few hundred people. And that was the case. I felt comfortable because I know that there are things that are much harder than that. So for you, next time you find yourself giving this big presentation or speech and you get very nervous, just do one of those embarrassing challenges before to get yourself into the right state. Step two, learn to improvise. We are all terrified of public speaking for one main reason. We're scared that something will go wrong. Now, you might be thinking, ah, oh, what if the projector stops working? What if I spill coffee over my shirt? What if I forget what I wanted to say? We worry that things go wrong. Now, let me tell you, after giving hundreds and hundreds of presentations, I can guarantee you of one thing, something will go wrong. I know this is maybe freaking out even more, but something will happen that you didn't plan for. But that's perfectly okay. Things will go wrong, it's okay. But what do beginners do in those moments? They freak out, they freeze, they forget what they wanted to say, they lose their confidence. Pros don't let that happen. Pros, they just roll with that. So much that the audience often doesn't even notice that something happened. So how can you become much more comfortable when something surprising, something unexpected happens? It's by learning how to improvise. Improvisation is the ultimate tool to become more comfortable on stage, to learn how to deal under pressure, and to just keep going when things go wrong. Now, the most straightforward way to start improv is by joining an improv group in your city. If, for example, you live in New York, you go on Google, improv group New York, and you'll find tons of options out there. What happens usually in those groups? Well, you get together a bunch of people, then the teacher gives you a random topic, like brother and sister having a fight. And then you go on stage with another person or more people and you just improvise a scene, ideally a funny one, together without having a plan pretty much. Again, improv is one of the most powerful tools you have to become a better speaker. Up to this point, I do one improv course per year because I know that will help me feel much more comfortable being on stage. And hey, it's not because I like it so much, but because I see the immense value of it. But what if there's no improv group near you? No problem, you can improvise also on your own. Here's a simple way to do it. Step one, pick a random topic. You can start by choosing a random topic. Anything will do it. You could do something more serious, like should school uniforms be mandatory? Or something a little bit lighter, like is pineapple on pizza a crime? You see, you can pick any random topic, but if you're struggling to think of topics, I'll actually include 20 ideas in the description to get you started. The alternative is you can also go on websites like perchance.org, where you can generate a random topic with one click. Um, we can quickly try it out. So here's perchance.org, and now we're gonna click at a random topic. Today, the random topic is homework should be banned. Ooh, okay, <laughs> so that's gonna be our topic for today. Now, step two, structure your thoughts. Give yourself maybe like 30 seconds, really max 60 seconds to structure your thoughts. Now, in those 30 seconds, you can write down every single detail of your speech. You only wanna think roughly of what are the key arguments that you wanna say there. The goal is to get comfortable with thinking on your feet. With practice, you get faster and faster until you may not even need any prep time at all. Step three, deliver your speech. Now in the last step, it's time to speak. So stand up, start talking, and don't really worry about making it perfect. I would suggest to speak for like two to five minutes and just letting all of your ideas out. Now improv, 
is never supposed to be perfect. It is messy. You will do things wrong, but it is about having fun with that. So if we go back to our topic, which was homework should be banned, then you can just start your speech and you say something like, today we'll talk about a topic that is very important to children around the world. Today we'll talk about why school homework should be banned. And then you go into your actual speech. Do you see? So play around with that. The more practice you do with this, the better you'll get at handling those unexpected situations, whether on stage or really also in everyday conversations. Step three, refine your delivery. Once you've gotten a little bit more comfortable with improvisation, it's time to fine tune your delivery. Now, how do you do that? the easiest and most powerful tool is to record yourself on camera. And I know, hey, watching yourself on camera, that can be super awkward. I actually avoided that for years and years because I felt like, ah, I don't want to see myself. But trust me, it's one of the best ways to spot any areas of improvement. But hey, it's not just about recording yourself. There's actually a special technique behind it. Let me tell you. Step one, record yourself. You can grab your phone, hit record, and just deliver your speech while looking directly into the camera. And that speech can be an actual speech or just any random topic that you're improvising on. Doesn't matter for this one. Step two, review the sound. Now comes the interesting part. You take your phone, you turn the volume up, but this time you put your phone face down and you just listen to it. So you're not watching yourself, you just listen to the sound of your voice. How is your pace? Are you rushing through? Or are you dragging? How's your tone? Do you sound super engaged or super monotone? How are your pauses? Listening without watching helps you understand how your voice is affecting your message. Step three, review the visuals. Now you do the opposite. So you take your phone, you turn the volume down this time, and you just watch the recording. This time you want to focus on your body language. How's your eye contact? Do you speak to the camera or are you maybe just lost somewhere in the room? What's your posture? Do you slouch or do you stand there with this very confident, very straight posture? And also how are your gestures? Do they seem pretty natural or do you move in a very robotic way there? By watching yourself on mute, you can spot those areas where your body language might be helping or sometimes even hurting your delivery. Step four, pick one area to improve. After reviewing the sound and the visuals, choose one area that you wanna work on. Now, what should you focus on? Focus on what's distracting the most. For example, a few filler words here and there, well, they probably won't distract your audience too much. But if you use filler words every few seconds, well, that might be a problem. Or I guess if you speak with a little accent, hey, that's not a problem, right? I speak with an accent as well. But if your accent is so thick that it makes it impossible to understand you, well then maybe focus on that. Find the one thing that stands out the most and really make it your priority to improve on that. When I watched myself for the first time, I realized that I needed to work on my facial expression because when I saw that recording, I thought, man, I look so freaking angry. I look like this puberty hitting teenager that was just having the worst day of his life. But I only saw that when I watched the recording. And so I said, you know what? I'm gonna focus on that. I'm gonna focus on looking a little bit friendlier every single time. Step five, practice that one skill. So for the next two weeks, focus on practicing just that one skill. Every time you improvise or anytime you give a speech, pay attention to that one skill. For example, right now I focus on pausing a little bit more often. So every time I practice, I remind myself, Philip, try to pause more often. And so in two weeks, I'll record myself again and see, have I made any progress? If not, I'll just keep working on that skill for another two weeks. But if I already feel good about that skill by then, well then I pick a new skill to focus on in the next two weeks. By tackling one skill at a time, you'll improve much quicker than if you just focus on everything. But hey, now that we're starting to improve our delivery, it's now time to explore how can you keep your listeners really on the edges of their seats? Step four, master the spices. In my previous job as a product manager at Uber, I felt pretty good about my presentations. I often thought like, ah, oh, Philip, you're such a wonderful presenter, hooking your audience right at the start, what a pro. 
when I realized in hindsight that I was average at best. Now, what was the problem? I focused so much at the hook at the beginning, but the problem was I didn't focus on hooking my audience after that. So oftentimes when I gave those presentations, yes, they paid attention at the beginning, but then I kept losing them in the middle of the presentation. You need to keep rehooking your audience throughout your presentation. If your presentation is in any way too predictable, people will zone out no matter how good the content is. So what you wanna try is, try to have almost like a tiny spy, something that hooks your audience every 60 seconds. Something unexpected, something that makes your audience want to stick around for more. So how do you keep them hooked throughout? The key is to learn a variety of techniques or spices to keep your speech interesting. One example is the anticipation hook. An anticipation hook is when you anticipate the awesome content that is about to come. When you sell the awesome things that your audience is about to hear. Example, in just a minute, I'm going to share a strategy that will double your income in half the effort. Now, that next technique, that's my personal favorite. Just by using that one idea, you can drastically improve your results. Do you see, those statements, they create curiosity. Your audience will want to keep listening to find out what's coming. But hey, the anticipation hook, well, that's just one of the techniques. There are many ways how you can spice up your presentations. Over the past 10 years, I've analyzed thousands of speeches, read 31 books on public speaking, and also did quite a few public speaking courses. Now, as part of that process, I identified the 20 techniques that the best speakers use the most, really over and over again. Those include stories, interactive calculation, polls, and many, many more. Now, to save you weeks of your life doing that same analysis, I've created a document that outlines all those 20 techniques. You'll find a link to that document in the description below. So go ahead check out the document and I would suggest pick maybe one to two of those techniques and the next time you give a speech, we'll try to weave those techniques into your speech. That will make your speech much more engaging. But hey, how can you transform your public speaking skills? Not just for that one speech, but really forever. How do you change your entire being and turn into this magnetic speaker that is within you? Step five, make your life the arena. I want to share a quick story that helped me really transform my speaking abilities because I feel it can do the same for you. In 1998, Ben Hunt Davis was standing in his apartment really beating himself up. He was part of the British rowing team and they just lost another championship. And he just thought like, how is that possible? How can that keep happening? We're good, right? But we keep losing year after year. And as he was getting more upset, he got an idea. He thought, Hmm, this, this could actually work. The same day he gathered his teammates to share what he had in mind. He said, gents, to win the next Olympics, we need to make drastic changes, but not just to our training, but in our everyday lives. From now on, I want you to ask yourself one question. Will this make the boat go faster? And yeah, from that moment onward, every team member asked himself that simple question before making any decision. One role, for example, he loved playing video games until late at night. He started asking himself, will this make the boat go faster? Another one was training way too much, really tiring his body. But he also started asking himself, will this make the boat go faster? And a third one loved eating pizza. Well, he also asked himself, will this make the boat go faster? From that moment onward, every single team member asked himself that one question. Two years later, the British rowing team went to the Olympics in Sydney. And back then, no one was expecting anything of them, right? Everyone thought like, ah, oh, the US, Canada, Australia, they're gonna win. But then the unthinkable happened. On September 24, the British rowing team crossed the finish line 0.8 seconds before the Australian boat. On that day, the British rowing team won the gold medal. Will this make the boat go faster made it possible? But hey, that question is not only for rowers. You can apply that same question, but to your public speaking. Will this make me a better speaker? 
every single day you'll find yourself in situations where you can either do nothing or stay the same or improve as a speaker. For example, tomorrow, let's say you are at the metro station. Instead of just scrolling through your phone, you go to the next person and give that stranger a high five to stop caring so much what other people think. Or next day you're in the morning, you can either choose to watch TV, morning news, or you start improvising a speech. Or take the next meeting. You have the choice to either hide behind your computer and say nothing, or volunteer to present. I, for example, this morning, I had a choice. Do I choose to just start working on my email straight away, or do I choose to record myself on camera to work on my confidence? I chose the camera. Every single day, you have the choice to become a better speaker. Make your life the arena. That's it. If you follow those five steps, you'll become a better speaker than 99% of the people. But hey, the best speakers, they're also captivating storytellers. And for that, you may want to check out this next video in which I share how to become a better storyteller than 99% of the people. Enjoy.